Hello, my name is David Carney, and for my final portfolio presentation here in MSE 645 for the summer, I decided to use Google Slides as my visual tool for this presentation. It's kind of like PowerPoint. All right, let's get started. So the IST was the first thing we talked about, which is the International Society for Technology and Education. So what's it used for? It's used to help guide a teacher through their journey of incorporating technology, new technology, into their classrooms, whether that's on their own or maybe through a uh, new standard or new type of learning through their school district or something along those lines. And these standards are just help teachers be aware of what and how they are teaching. So the seven standards include analysis, analyst, learner, leader, citizen, collaborator, designer, and facilitator. So essentially these standards help teachers become tech savvy so that when they are teaching this new technology, they are comfortable with what they're teaching and know how to teach it to the students. All right, the first thing we talked about was digital citizenship. What does that mean? Essentially, that means being able to navigate on the web, understanding uh, copyright laws and understanding what the public domain is, how to use those types of things when you're creating your own presentations and projects, taking information and different things from the internet. Okay, we talked all about safety and privacy. We had to read some articles and watch some videos. Is, you know, should the government be allowed to access cell phones and social media accounts, email address, those types of things? and understanding the difference between safety and privacy. So for that, we had to use, we had to create a presentation stating our side using Adobe Spark. And, Adobe, and this was my project here. Just click on it. I uploaded it to YouTube. It's a presentation tool, kind of like PowerPoint, except you can be interactive with it. You can add pictures, music, excuse me, pictures, music, different types of animations, and obviously text, videos. And what was great, the reason, the big reason that we had to first incorporate understanding copyright laws is that a lot of these presentations, things we made throughout the semester, you know, we had to make sure we were doing them correctly and legally as to not get in trouble with copyright laws and those types of things. So what's great about a lot of these tools, including Adobe Spark, is that you can incorporate and add pictures through they're the, through the technology tool that you're using and they were there those tools are able to filter out what you can use and what you cannot use things that are in the public domain or have commercial use now if you can't do that i'll show you real quick how to do it we go to google.com here when you're looking up images so let's go to images say i want to type find an image of a dog with clip art dog with clip art now, how do we know if this stuff is in the public domain, that it's freely allowed to be used, or if it's not? Sometimes it'll say under the free images, there are some websites that have absolutely free things. If not, go to this tools and usage rights. So commercial and other licenses or creative commons licenses. These are things that everyone can, is allowed to use for free without any, without running the risk of copyright laws or copyright infringement and those types of things. Adobe Spark is a great tool that I definitely plan to use in the future when creating presentations. It was super easy to use, and I enjoyed using it. Moving forward, talking about trends in technology. What does that mean How in technology, especially in the education world, especially through the pandemic, we saw that a lot of police places had to switch to online learning, and virtual reality is a big thing that we talked about, especially last semester and through this project this semester. So we had to create an infographic using this, I used Picto chart. Super easy to use. There were a lot of different tutorials on it that were super helpful. And not only can you create infographics, you can create presentations, posters, flyers, different things, upload them to social media. And they have templates that you can use as well, or you can create things on your own. So even, you know, outside, if I'm, you know, I can create flyers and different things from that. And it was absolutely free. There are upgraded versions, but the free version was more than enough for me and what I needed to do for this class. Next, we're using a screencast tool. That's what I'm using right now to for this final portfolio, presenting it to you. I use screen, Screencast-O-Matic right now. We had to look at three different types, Loom and Screencastify. 
out of the three, Screencast-O-Matic for me was the best one. It had a lot of different tutorials that were very short and to the point, maybe a minute, minute and a half, sometimes two minutes. When I looked on Loom, I could only find two really big tutorials that were long and hard to understand and a lot to go through, and I didn't like it. And Screencastify as well was super expensive. The free version was fine. You were only allowed to record five minutes on the free version in Loom and Screencastify versus 15 minutes on Screencast-O-Matic. And it was the cheapest one out of the three. Screencastify, if you wanted the full upgraded version, it was $100. And I personally don't have $100 to spare at this the present moment. So for the project, we had to create a presentation that we would present to students or an audience of some sort. I decided to present to students, explaining to them the seven kingdoms of biology. And what was great, instead of having to create an entire presentation, either on PowerPoint or some other visual tool like Google Slides, I was able to upload everything into a Word document and then just go down through the Word document, right down the Word document, just like this. And all the pictures that I'm using in all of my presentations, especially this one, I was able to use through Google and Creative Commons licenses. They were all legal to use. I didn't run into any copyright infringement or anything of that nature. It was super easy to use. I really enjoyed using that. I would definitely use it in the future. It's super simple to use, and it makes things a lot easier rather than creating an entire presentation. If you have something real quick you want to explain to students, you just hit the Screencast-O-Matic tool, hit record, and the microphone will pick you up. You explain to them, you know, you pull something up on Google, explain to them what you're using, and then bam, you're good to go right then and there. And I definitely could see myself using this outside of the classroom, just like screenshots or screen recordings on my iPhone. This would be for my laptop if I'm hanging out with friends or something, or I just want to send something real quick to somebody. Really enjoyed using the Screencast-O-Matic. It's really helpful for me. So we got quiz tools and formative assessment tools. For the quiz tools, we had to create a five-question quiz on some sort of quizzing technology tool, and I decided to use Quizlet. I was very familiar with it before this class. It's a super helpful tool for studying, and you can create your own flashcards, which is what, what I did here. I created five questions, flashcards. You can learn them, write them out, learn how to spell them, and then it creates, you hit test, and it creates tests for you, whether it's a true and false question, can be open-ended questions, fill in the blank, matching, those two types of things, and you can play games, and um, it was a really, it's a really, really great tool, and it's absolutely free. There is an upgraded version, but the free version is more than enough for any student trying to study and get better and whatnot. Pool Everywhere is another tool that I like to use, and I definitely see myself using this in the future in my classes, maybe as a bell ringer at the beginning of class. Everybody creates a Pool, pool Everywhere account. It's free to create, and I created a question here. So all you would have to do is after everyone creates their account, is you put them into the class, you hit activate on that question. They go to their Pool Everywhere, whether it's on an app or on their laptops, activate the question. Click on the question, so let's see what the question is. Which of the following is not one of the four stages of cellular respiration? So then they would look and see it's activated, and they would just click on the question, click on the answer they think it is, and then it would be plugged into um, me as the teacher, plugged into my site, and I would see who responded, who didn't, who got it right, and who did not, and then we could maybe have a class discussion on that to start the class. Nearpod assignment, we had to create a presentation, and I really like this Nearpod. We've used it before in other classes. It's super interactive, and I really like that about it. You know, you can create open-ended questions for discussion, different things, and the one thing I really enjoyed about it is that it is self-paced for the students. You know, they're not, so if they're writing down notes, they don't feel the need to rush or different things like that, and again, this tool, you can type, write things, um, you can explain things by talking into a microphone. And whatnot. So I talked about. Oops, excuse me. So I did a resume. Mark and recapture method is just a method in science that we use to estimate populations of certain animals in a given area. Give it one second to load here. 4PS3R. Okay, thank you. So marking recapture method, estimating the population size of a given area. Then there's open ended questions. Students would answer, write down their questions, then submit them. One thing I really liked is I, the opportunity to make this a super interactive so they could draw in the background. So how does Mark and Recapture Method work? Is you have to 
write, you first have to capture a, a population of animals. In this case, we were using rabbits, and then you have to tag them. Now you can use, there's a lot of different sprays that biologists use that are um, non-toxic to animals. And then you would just spray a little piece on their back or maybe tag them on their ear. And then you would let the animals go, and then you'd come back again. So let's, I told them to draw a green circle on all of those animals. And then you would catch them again. So we caught them again. We caught eight more rabbits, except out of the eight, four of them had the green had the green circle. So you, we caught recaught four of the same rabbits from the first set, from the first sample. And then we have to just calculate the population size through a formula, and then they would write down their response, and then why they would. I'd like to know have them understand why it's important to use the market recapture method and using population you know, given animals. And then you can do polls at the end. Did they enjoy the presentation? Did they learn? And you can use this as a as a test, you know, after you present something, you can create questions for them to answer as kind of a review for the end of the question, which is really great. And these are tools that I definitely plan on using in the future as, as a teacher for my students. Okay, Samer, one thing I did want to talk about with Samer is this is about integrating technology into the classroom and revamping and improving an assignment or an assessment. So we had to, for this, we created a project and mine was how to use a microscope. And the first thing I would give the students is a piece of paper with a picture of a microscope for them to label the microscope and then write a one page summary on how to take care of a microscope and use it. Okay, substitution means that you, you replace the technology but there's no real functional change. Instead of using pen and paper, they would use a Word document and then substitute the piece of paper with a picture for a real microscope. Augmentation is changing the technology with a little bit of and a functional improvement. So what does that mean? When they're creating their one page summary, I would allow the students to use spell check or use grammar um, applications to help make sure that they were writing properly with correct grammar. Modification is changing the technology but incorporating different aspects to improve the assignment. So maybe I would let the kids get into groups to create their um, to help study, create their one-page summaries, peer review that incorporates collaboration. Then a redefinition, which is great, is incorporating new technology and then completely revamping the assignment to incorporate different things. So what I would have to do is what I would have them do is have the students get into groups and that incorporates collaboration for modification. But then I would have them create a presentation on how to use a microscope. And so that would show me the mastery of that they know how to use a microscope. And they could use a digital presentation or, or a visual tool presentation like PowerPoint and Google Slides. And the, the biggest thing and the biggest key when using SAMR is that the goal of the assignment stays the same throughout all four rungs of the ladder. In this case, was showing mastery of how to use a microscope and knowing the parts of a microscope, which is, which is absolutely key when you're going up the, the SAMR ladder is understanding does the goal stay the same throughout the entire modification or throughout the entire process of going up the SAMR ladder with different aspects of things. Okay, thank you. That is the, my presentation, my final portfolio for this class. I really enjoyed it. And definitely these are tools I would definitely consider using in the future from a professional standpoint and outside of the classroom as well. I really enjoyed them and this class may be a lot more tech savvy moving forward, which was extremely helpful for me. Thank you very much.